Like moths to a flame, you've thrown caution to the wind for a glimpse into our world. Well, now you're in it. Welcome to Aft Up Stories. Everybody and welcome to a new episode of Effed Up Stories. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight we have with us a, a guest for the first time in a long time. Her name is uh, Marie Stevens. She's a psychic and empath, and we'll be talking with her about her very interesting life um, doing these things. Um, before we jump into that, I just uh, want to kind of shoot out a couple things. Uh, we have not had a show for a while. Uh, the reason for that is that I've been sick. Um, so now that I'm around or m- around the mend, uh, we'll be bringing these shows back. Uh, we haven't forgotten about the cryptozoological uh, episodes. We have a ton of those um, that we're going to start recording this weekend, and uh, we're just we want to get them all recorded into one. You know, like have five or six ready to go at the same time, so that we can keep it. Um, you know, day by day, and uh, we have a, a ton of stories to put in a podcast that came into me over the, the last couple of months, so lots of stuff coming your way soon, um, and with that having been said, uh, if you have an effed up story of your own and you'd like to get it uh, on the website and into a podcast, you can submit that to us at effedupstories.com, that's E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. Uh, go to the submission form, fill it out, hit submit, we'll get it, and get it out there. And with that said, uh, welcome, Marie, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, our pleasure. It's been a long time since we did this, and uh, I'm I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, we haven't had a guest in how long, Ryan? Uh, oh, geez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, maybe a year? Yeah. So, uh, wow. yeah, so uh, we're bringing it all back for you. So, I, I, <laughs> I'm, um, but, but we should do this more. We should get guests on here more. So, uh, Marie, <clears throat> let, let's start because I, I have your, you know, your um, summary, which is still a lot to this, this story um, that you sent me on the website. But let, let's start for when it all started for you. I mean, you were young, you were like three years old. And, mm-hmm. You didn't understand what this was. Can you explain, uh, just tell us a bit about yourself and what it is that you can do? Yeah, um, so basically, um, I grew up in South Florida, and um, my mother was a psychic, very good, very good, to the point where, you know, she was kind of locally famous in our area. And um, I grew up just kind of being this little sort of paranormal magnet. (laughs) You know, I just kind of attracted these things to me, not trying to, not, you know, I never did a Ouija board. I never did anything like that. I wasn't searching it out. It kind of found me. And so um, I I do paranormal work. Um, I'm a medium. Um, I can, you know, kind of communicate, uh, and still, like, you know, I, I've, like I say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a reluctant psychic because I, I do feel things, but yet I'm, I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I'm still searching for, you know, answers on my own too. So, you know, there's things that I can do that I, I don't even realize, you know, like, like I don't, I don't have, I don't know if I'm, you know, like a, I don't have titles, you know, I don't get a title. People say, oh, I'm clairvoyant or I'm this or that, you know, I just, I can't, hey, look, I feel things, I see things, I hear things. 
I don't know what the heck that's called, but I can do it, you know. So so I just kind of don't put, like, you know, a lot of pressure on anything, you know, titles and whatnot. I just, you know, hey, if you've got a, a particular, you know, land, piece of land, home, business, something, and, you know, there's something in there you don't understand uh, or you're having experiences, dreams, you know, you want to contact, um, you know, a loved one or something, you know, give me a call and we'll talk, you know. So, yeah, it started for me very, very early. I was... um one of those kids that I was just very, very aware, very early on. And I remember things from when I was like two and three, you know, I just, re- just remember them like it was yesterday. And so I started having, you know, paranormal experiences from the beginning, from the get go. And the thing was, my mom was not the type where she had stuff where she was exposing me to it. So I didn't know what I was going through. I just knew it was weird. And I just knew it was strange. And, I, you know, I kind of didn't understand. And, I, I didn't know that I could really go to her and, and tell her stuff. And she, she, you know, maybe she could shine, shine a light on things. You know, I just I was kind of all alone in this growing up. And so um, when you're a kid and you're very empathic and you're very sensitive, it's really difficult. And I've talked to other people, I've confirmed that when you're like this, it's hard to like go to school. It's hard to eat in restaurants. It's so difficult because you're feeling everybody's stuff. And you're a kid, you don't know how to turn it off. So you, you know, now I can, I can go to a restaurant, you know, sit there for hours. But, you know, as a kid, I would just immediately have to like leave because it was just so um, suffocating in a way because you would just feel, I would know exactly who was going through what. Someone was sad, someone was sick, someone was angry, someone was going through divorce. It was just I was just like a little magnet. And so um, I started experiencing paranormal stuff very, very early on. And just even as a little kid going, okay, okay I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. What is this? You know? And um, did like you, I said, my mother, mm-hmm, go ahead. Did, did you ever feel like, um, like what you were going through was normal and other people experienced it? Or did you uh, instinctively know that it was different? Did you like have friends that you confided in? Or like, how did you come to find that, uh, you know, this was a, a different experience that was unique to you? Well, you know, I grew up with two different trains of thought. One time, you know, when I would experience these things and be like, what the heck is this? I didn't know anything about ghosts or demons. Like I said, my mom wasn't the type of psychic where she would say, come here, let me teach you how to, you know, read tarot cards. You know, she just never, she she did her own thing and that was it. There's something mom did and she didn't expose me to it. So I had no clue. I had no idea for most of my life, what I was going through until I got to be um, in my early teens. And I moved back in. I lived with my dad for a while, and I moved back in with my mom. And she had, you know, kind of started, <clears throat> excuse me, started going to um, church. And she wasn't a churchy, churchy, you know, sort of uh, goofy Christian. She was, you know, still very spiritual, but, you know, she believed in other things at this point. And she it wasn't until then I started going to church that I started seeing and realizing that there is a spiritual realm where things are happening and you can't see it, you know? And I learned about demons and angels and this and that. And then I, you know, of course the church doesn't want to talk about ghosts because there's no such thing as ghosts. It's only angels and demons. You know, I found um, if you start talking about that kind of thing, they kind of think you're weird and, you know, ostracize you. But I, it was in my early teens that I started to go, oh, holy crap. Everything came together like a you know a puzzle. Oh my gosh! The reason why I've been seeing and feeling all this stuff is because I'm sensitive and I'm empathic, and I started you know finding out what what you know what what, what those words meant truly. Okay. And so it was then yeah it was then that I kind of go oh okay I'm not crazy I've been seeing and feeling things because I'm just that way. You know? So let, let's go back and look at uh, some of the things that you've experienced uh, previous to finding this out like. Um, uh, I know that you, uh, when you lived with your dad, uh, she or he had a, um, well, he had remarried um, mm-hmm. twice, and so there was two different people um, that uh, you had lived with before you went back with your mom. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so let let's start with the first one, and chronologically okay. uh, build up to the the present. So, just describe for us, uh, you know, some of the things that you experienced um, early on. Okay, well, um, like I said, you know, I was either at my mom's on the weekdays or at my dad's and his wife, his second wife, or, uh, there, you know, she had a condo, so it was either there or uh, sometimes during the week, you know, weekend or whatever, summer, we would go to her parents' house, which was in Miami, and that place was haunted as well. And so wherever I was, I was always going through something. It was just one paranormal experience after another. 
And so um, basically, you know, being with my dad and his second wife, um, it was kind of an interesting experience because my mom, if I, you know, had an issue, I knew I could go to her, but they were very closed off. They were not open to the paranormal at all. And so it was really difficult. I remember um, sort of the first experience that I had, my uh, stepmother had this condo and she was more in the city. And she had this weird con- like condo, and she had this other condo that was kind of underneath her. And it was very strange because we always noticed how it was very creepy. There was like this, like the, the stairs that you led up to her condo. There was like this window into the dining room of the other condo, and it would just always gave you the creep. Everyone that walked by that place were like, "Ooh, I hate this place." You know, it's just weird. What was what's in this place? It was just really, really creepy. And the people that would move into this place, they would only be there for like a few months, and then they would leave unexpectedly. It was very strange. So I kind of surmised over a period of time that there's probably something in there that maybe was going through the walls or something. But this, like the earliest paranormal experiences that I had in that uh, condo was um, I was given some toys and they were little baby dolls. They were very tiny, the size of a quarter. And I remember I was like this little OCD kid and I remember putting these baby dolls in order on a desk. And it wasn't near a window, it wasn't near an air vent, nothing. And I remember I put them in a specific order, and I came back. We we had gone to a party or something, come back, and they were all organized completely differently. And I remember freaking out. And I was a little, little kid. I remember, like, looking over my shoulder, like, what is going on here? What is that, you know? But I didn't think ghosts. I didn't think demons. I didn't know what to think. I just knew something is weird. And then things escalated. The more I stayed, you know, I would stay with them on the weekend. And when I would stay with them, um, at night was pretty much the worst time. Because whatever, wherever I was, I was always tormented at night. And so I would be sleeping on this little pull-out couch. And they would, you know, leave their door open, you know. And um, I remember just being woken up with something, kicking the bed really hard. Uh, with the covers being ripped off the bed in the middle of the night and also, uh, so, you know, something whispering in my ear. And you could not, not only hear the whispers, but you could feel the breath on your feet. That's how creepy it was. That's creepy. And I re- yeah, it's, it's horrible. Um, and uh, that, that kind of stuff will just scare you to death. When, you know, you're sleeping, you're dead asleep, and then all of a sudden you feel breath on your face. Um, and then um, something, I don't know what, something with very sharp nails, something was always grabbing my feet in the middle of the night. And it was just, whatever the thing was, was just very tormenting. It was very just nasty. And so I, in my little, you know, four-year-old brain, I was like, oh, I have to wear my socks to bed because the foot monster won't get me, you know? And they had a good laugh over that. They're like, oh, that's cute, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm dead serious here. I'm like four years old thinking there's a monster after my feet every night, you know? But, um, but yeah, I mean, that was like a, a nightly thing. You know, and then uh, that, that's pretty much nightmare. every kid's uh, worst nightmare, right? The 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 monster under the bed. Well, the boogeyman it, that's real. <laughs> it, you know, you hang you hang your feet over the side of the bed, and uh, or you avoid hanging your feet over the side of the bed. I mean, I remember being a kid, and you know, I'd make a point of, of you know jumping off the edge of the bed mm-hmm. so I could get as far away from underneath. You know. You know, mm-hmm. on yeah. That- Every kid does. They always like like dive off your bed and dive onto the bed just so your feet aren't within monster reach. Well, so, I, that's yeah. right. I actually saw. I know this a little bit off topic, but kind of related. I just saw like one of those picture memes the other day on Facebook, and it was a, a picture of you know drawn of someone lying on the bed and you know their hands were you know not hanging over the edge and it was like you know perfectly safe from the boogeyman, and the next picture had the arm hanging over the edge and it was like extremely vulnerable to boogeyman attack right <laughs> and uh, that is how a lot of people uh, I'm uncomfortable if, if I have like a, a limb hanging off the side of the bed even now like I have to be in my sheets um, perhaps mm-hmm. I have issues but <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but yeah so <clears throat> so obviously you were dealing with uh, some pretty crazy stuff for a person of any age let alone a four-year-old um, and of course, as you got older, um, these things intensified. So do you think that whatever it was, right? Because it's interesting that, you know, if you take like a really haunted place and you could take someone who's not sensitive and, you know, they go into this place and a lot of people 
will say that they can feel, you know, they feel uneasy. They feel something. They can't quite articulate it, uh, but they can sense something, which I would imagine would be extremely strong to someone who's sensitive. So, like, a sensitive person can seem to pick up on this even in, uh, you know, areas that nobody else can because they're sensitive to it. So Mm -hmm. why do you, like, do you think that whatever these things are target at you because that, you know, they can tell that, like, they can get a reaction out of you that they can tell that you can, you know, like, it's almost like they can tell that you can see it or sense it and it, it gets them off? Like, why do you think that they target you? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure because um, I've seen stories where there's a whole family and whatever it is in that house only targets certain people. And then other people, if they're really closed off, they never see any activity. And this one person can be totally tormented. And that's how I was with my, you know, my, my stepdad and my, my, I mean, my dad and my stepmom, they felt nothing. They experienced nothing because they were completely shut off. Me, I think I was just a scared little kid and whatever this thing was, we just had a blast torturing me. I think it was just, you know, what? why else would you just grab someone's feet all night long or whisper in their face? You know, I would get so scared. I would run into their room and beg them to sleep in the bed with me. And when they would, it, it wouldn't be as bad. You know, the, the activity, I would still wake up and just look, look around the room. I just knew something was there. But uh, when they were with me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as bad. So, um, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen I've seen these stories before where someone is sensitive and they just get tortured just all the time, you know. When you so went, I, when, when you yeah. went to your mother with these issues, because I I know that your uh, your stepmom and your dad just brushed it off as, you know, it's just bad dreams. It's just you know whatever. But mm-hmm. when when you went to your mom, um, you know, considering that she she was a, a prolific you know psychic, I mean, did she ever? you know, it, it, like a, see that you had any gifts or abilities? Like, did she ever, um, like, try to explain it to you or, or elaborate on what it was? No, not not at all. In fact, I didn't really even realize that I could go to my mom. This was the thing. I suffered with this on my own. And like I said, I didn't really even understand what my mom did until I was about six years old. And uh, when I was six years old, I had... I started having, my dad was in law enforcement, and when you have a parent or someone that's in law enforcement, it, 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 you, you grow up, and finally, at whatever age, it could be any age, but it hits you that that parent could die. And then that feeling kind of never leaves you. It always it always haunts you at some point. You know, it's always in the back of your mind that you might not see that person again, you know. So um, when I was six years old, I started having these reoccurring nightmares every night for about two weeks. And it was me looking at a picture of my dad's tombstone with like this really green grass around it. It was just this eerie dream. And I had it every night and I would wake up in a cold sweat, but I didn't say anything to anybody. I remember thinking, no, I'm stupid. I'm not going to say anything. So I didn't say anything. And then one night my mom was sitting across the table from me and she just looked at me and she goes, you've been having dreams of your, of your, of your dad dying. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah. And then she explained the dream perfectly to me. And I didn't tell her anything. She knew everything. So that's when I was kind of aware that my mom could do stuff, but I didn't know what I was going through. This is how little I knew. I didn't know that what the paranormal stuff that I was going through had anything to do with her psychic stuff. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was in the same realm. So I I didn't know I could even talk to her. So I had no idea. So I literally suffered with this, you know, very eerie, crazy, horrible, terrifying stuff all on my own. And it wasn't until I was much older that my mom and I actually sat down and said, oh, yeah, you know, this thing, that thing, and whatever. We would share stories. We would, you know, talk about our experiences and that kind of thing. It wasn't until I was very much older. So, you know, at this time when I was a little kid, I was pretty much just doing, you know, just surviving. I was just trying to get through it. I was trying to, you know, every night I knew I was going to be tormented at my stepmom's. Every time we went to Miami to the grandma's house, I knew something bad was going to happen there. You know, it was just a given. I just knew. And so, and I was just floundering. I didn't know what I was going through. I was very, very much in the dark, you know. So when you initially, um, you know, I guess start putting a, a name and a, and a face or a picture to some of the things that you have experienced for all these years, um, you said that uh, you were with your stepmom in a library and you had happened upon um, like a, a section on ghosts. Mm-hmm. And so, like, 
did you pick up a specific book that uh, you know is very very um, I guess accurate to you know like specific to your um, experiences or like what was it do you remember exactly like if it wasn't just like a I guess what I'm trying to say is a ghost would be like a blanket term for all kinds of phenomena but did you happen to come across like um, I don't know specific entities or something that you were like that's what happened to me that's what was visiting my room or um no because this was um in the early 80s and this was before all the paranormal you know before before all the paranormal shows and everything like that so this was still really kind of like a new thing so i i you know we were in the i just ha- we were in the library happened upon the paranormal section you know i always kind of liked that kind of stuff i always thought it was kind of interesting as far as like bigfoot and you know stuff like that i was always like wow that's kind of neat wonder you know because i used to watch um in search of with leonard nimoy and it's like it half scared me and half fascinated me, but I always loved that show. I love mysteries, so I was like, "Well, wow, you know, this is really cool." So I started looking at ghosts, and I was kind of half scared to even read these books. But I thought, you know, I I, I need to, you know, some, some something just compelled me to start just reading through the books, and so I read, you know, one experience. You know, you read about the Amityville horror, you read about, you know, this story and that story, and you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren and their stories, and you know, you start reading all these, you know, paranormal experiences, the ones that were in print at that time, anyways. And so, um, it just opened my eyes. I finally was like, "Holy crap!" You know, and I still kind of didn't understand it, but I had a bit of a, a better idea of what it was, you know, because before, like I said, I had no clue. I didn't know. I thought, I, you know, a little kid. I thought, "Oh my God, what is this? I'm crazy," you know. I ran over to my step mom and I said, look, 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 this is what I'm going through. This is, you know, this is the foot monster. This is the, you know, this is this, this is that. And she just very coldly, dismissively just said, no, 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 there's, there's not such thing as ghosts. You're just imagining things. Just don't think about it and it'll go away. And so I was, you know, kind of conflicted at that point. I was like, well, gosh, is there, you know, because you look to your parents for help and guidance. And when they're not helpful, it, it kind of throws you for a loop because you're here, you are suffering. You're going through hell. And they're not even listening. They're not even trying to understand. You know, and, you know it, I would imagine that a lot of uh, people who have psychic gifts and empathic abilities um, experience that same thing because a lot of adults, um, you know, they're not into that. And a lot of people kind of brush off the paranormal. Um, you can't even have a, a paranormal uh, medium today with <laughs> without people who make it their business to be a skeptic and just... To, they don't believe in it, but they dedicate all their time to going in and trying to debunk it, <laughs> right? So, well, yeah, and I mean, we, you, we end up with this situation. Um, you know, you hear a lot about children being receptive. You know, they haven't been indoctrinated into any particular worldview. Um, you know, the world is still very much a anything goes kind of a place, and you know, I think. As we get older, um, of course, you know, you're, you you have all these things about real life drilled into your head. And, you know, for the average person, um, I, and I think this is why, you know, th- the skeptic um, exists is, is because, you know, it, it, it rattles the cage of their worldview. And, I mean, let's face it, the world is such a crazy mixed up incomprehensible place at the best of times that anything that kind of rattles that cage or threatens somebody's uh, um, quote unquote stable worldview um, you know is 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 met with such um, you know uh, aggressive denial and and skepticism yeah, they don't you know, want. Think, they can't live with it being right. It bothers them. Like they, they can't just well, live and yeah, let live. It, right? It, 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 it literally threatens the 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 confines of this neat little white picket fence reality that m- most people, um, you know, live in. It's a it's this forced construct. Um, I mean, you know, I'm I'm a huge uh, fan of science and and all this, uh, you know, kind of stuff that we call reality, you know, science is verifiable because it's testable and repeatable, blah, blah, blah. But there are so many things in the world that, you know, uh, are just unexplainable in the realm of, of, of this scientific 
reality. The the you know how this this way that we um, determine what's real and what's not real, and you know it's mm-hmm. it, it, it creates um, it, it it can create problems. Obviously, as you know, I mean, I I had experiences as a, as a child, and I mean, we've all heard lots of stories about people who've had experiences as a, as a child. And your parents, you know, just brush it off as being fantasy or whatever. And, uh, you know, it, it, it can obviously lead to lots of confusion and, and issues for developing young people. So uh, speaking of, right. of, of, you know, these experiences that we can't explain, uh, there's two, you know, two experiences that you mentioned in, uh, in your story that, um, you know, again, like non-explainable uh the first one is the uh well to me it sounded like um it's kind of like sleep paralysis but uh a little bit more than that you said you were uh, asleep during the night and then all of a sudden your eyes shot open you couldn't breathe you couldn't move and um you know you, you could look around like you could move your eyes you were awake but yet you know you, you couldn't move at all uh, is that something that you, you had experienced uh, on more than one occasion or just this specific time? No, it was just this one time. Um, I, was a li- I was a little bit older. Um, I was about eight, nine years old. My father and his second wife were getting a divorce, and I was in Miami at my grandmother's place, which was haunted. We had some, you know, weird, I had, I had some weird experience there anyways, and um and uh, so, you know, that, that place was really dark. I used to have things, there was like this one back bedroom where down the hallway, you know, they had all the bedrooms and something, I don't know what it was, literally just kind of like ran up to me and just kind of almost like pushed me. And I remember running down the hall because everyone was in the kitchen. I remember running down the hall, just like, <laughs> you know, just something chased me out of there. So something was there. I just don't know what. Um like I said, you know, still a little confused little kid, you know, and so I remember I was um, having, you know, just, just a lot of turmoil. I was really, you know, just not happy. You know, things were bad in my life. My parents were, you know, my dad was getting a divorce again. So um, here, you know, my, my stepmom sent me to my grandma's so that I could, you know, just kind of get away from it all. And it was kind of one of the worst places to be because this place had paranormal activity as well. And, and so one night I'm, I'm laying there. And in this one bedroom, and there was plenty of light in the room from the, the neighbors, you know, uh, security lights, they were just shining right in the room, you know, the room. So I could see everything perfectly. And I was sleeping fine. And then literally, I literally woke up. And it was the most terrifying thing I've ever been through because you don't know if you're dying, you're having a heart attack, you know, what is it? So I literally, my, my eyes shot open, I'm laying there, I can't move an inch. Everything is plastered. I, I can feel a, a weird pressure. Um, like there was like a wind, not, not like a wind, but like just like a pressure. And it was on every finger, every toe, every limb I had. And it was literally just pressing me down into the bed. And I could not breathe. Whatever it was, was sucking the air out of my lungs. And I remember just laying there, just, just gasping. And um, I remember trying to move because my, my grandma was, you know, not doing so well. I was very, you know, crying and not very happy. And my grandma was actually sleeping in the bed with me because, you know, she wanted to comfort me. And she was sleeping like a log. And so I was, you know, desperately trying to free myself from whatever this thing was to kick her or something to get her help. And so I remember just desperately trying to, you know, free myself from this grip. And I could not breathe. And I remember, you know, not really knowing about God as a kid, but, you know, thinking, okay, well, if if anyone can help me, maybe it's him. So I remember in my head, I was screaming, God, 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 please help me, please help me. And literally within seconds, whatever it was, just let off of me and I could breathe. And I just remember just being completely terrified, looking around the room, thinking, you know, if something's that strong to do that to me, I should be able to see it. But I I didn't see anything. There was nothing. But it was just forced. I don't know. And of course you had a, a probably a, a more terrifying experience um, where you awoke to find an impish creature on top of you. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the last experiences that I had at my stepmother's condo. And like I said, as I got older, things got more aggressive. It wasn't just like, you know, oh, just grabbing my feet in the middle of the night. It was it was this thing. And I remember I was sleeping 
Um, I was living there full time and I was sleeping in my room. And uh, once again, something was kicking up bed and making a big racket. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. So I got out of my room and the living room couch was right there by my parents' door. And their door was open. And I'm thinking, okay, I can just sleep here because I, I would get in trouble if I did that. So I was thinking, okay, I can totally sleep here. And then right before it's time to go, you know, go to school, I can wake up and just run back in my room and just get ready and whatever. And they, they'll, 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 they'll never know it, you know. So I thought I was being real smart. So I, I lay down on the couch and, you know, I started to get cozy, hoping that I could get, you know, a few more hours of sleep before school. And um, literally, to this day, I don't even know what the thing was, how to explain it, but literally something very tiny. It was probably all of three feet. Um, it was on top of me and this thing, um, I could feel the weight of it and the thing was hissing in my face. That's the one thing I remember was just in my face and I could feel the breath on my face and it was the most terrifying thing ever. This thing had its, uh, hand over my eyes. I could see kind of beneath the hand. I could see this thing and I could see something, um, something was over my mouth so I couldn't breathe. I couldn't scream. And I'm just, I'm just flailing at this point, trying to get this thing off of me. And I remember something said, grab its arms and throw it down. And I remember I grabbed its arms, and I could still feel its arms, its little tiny arms. And I remember I grabbed its arms, and I threw it down on the ground. And I remember getting up and looking, thinking I would see something scamper away because it was so horrible. And, and I saw nothing. And, but I still remember this thing was just, like, hissing and, and kind of screeching. And it was just like, a, like I was being attacked by a monkey or something. <laughs> It's horrible. So th- this house, because uh, you did say that uh, the house had bad vibes um, right from the get-go. So mm-hmm. do, do you think that um, whatever it was that was tormenting in you, uh, tormenting you there, you know, it, it had been there this whole time. You just happened to be unlucky enough, I guess, in this case, that you could, uh, you know, get its attention and sense it. Or do you think it's yeah. possible? Go ahead. Or, or I was just going to say, or do you think it's possible that, um, you know, because you, you, you could walk around and, and feel everybody's uh, emotions and, and, you know, you could pick up on all these things. You, do you think that, like, it, it's possible that you could, um, j- you know, it's you're vulnerable when you're out. Like, you could mm-hmm. just attract things and bring it home with you or do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I've uh, had many years to, to kind of research and think about this and kind of wonder about it. And I definitely believe that you can, you know, drag things around with you, whether it's, you know, just spirits that are attracted to you, a relative, you know, something. Um, I had a later experience that I, I wrote about, um, and, and, you know, we can talk about that later. But, um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, I think things can follow people. Um, this particular house, it was really strange. My mom, my grandma's, uh, I mean, my stepmom's condo. Um, it was weird because when I would go to my mom's house, you know, um, I wouldn't feel it there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through anything really, really bad there. I would feel a little stuff there, but nothing bad. But as soon as I got to my stepmom's condo, it was the same thing over and over and over again. And like I said, this, this one lower condo that nobody would live in for more than a few months. Everyone said that it, it would creep them out. So I, I did research on my stepmom's condo, and she was like the second owner, and the guy that lived there before her wasn't involved in anything weird, you know. So it, it could be in her condo, or it, it, I think, and I've been in other places where things go through the wall. So I think maybe possibly it was something weird in this one condo. It just it just felt like, you know, you walk into a place and you know someone's been like murdered there or suicide or just something so deep and dark and just really 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 creepy um it had that vibe to it it had that vibe like something bad had happened there okay okay so that was your uh your last uh major experience um in that place and then of course your your dad and uh, your stepmom got divorced Mm -hmm. and uh now when he remarried again uh you didn't get along with the the new stepmother at all and in fact um there's further ties to that, I believe, later on in the story. Um, let, mm-hmm. let, let, let's go there. Let, let's go w- with your involvement with the paranormal um, when your dad remarries this uh, quote-unquote evil woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, she was uh, very... Uh, I, I still to this day can't even put into words. This woman was like a walking demon. She was a demon in a, you know, human body or something. This woman was so evil and she was so odd because she would go to, you know, her Baptist church and she would put on this image 
And she was a law enforcement as well. And so she would put on this image like she was this, you know, goody two shoes. And yet she would come home and just absolutely torture me. She hated me, I guess, because I was, you know, not hers. And I was, you know, my father's other, you know, like I, it, was a, it was a reminder that my dad, you know, was married to someone else. I mean, I had so many people say, oh, she was jealous. It was this, it was that. Whatever it was, this woman was just evil and just wanted to torture something. And so for six years, I lived with them. And it was just hell on earth. She was really horrible. She was really good at manipulating things and doing bad things. Like she would, you know, like, you know, have a, she was just in all out abusive situations. She would have like a packet of cigarettes. And I did not smoke. I was very against it, even as a kid. And she would have a packet of cigarettes on the counter. And I was like, what is that? She was like, I'm going to tell your dad that I found that in your room. You know, so she would set things up to get me in trouble. She was almost like a jealous older sibling. It was really twisted and horrible. So um, I had to deal with that for six years, and it was very just horrible. And this woman was just just almost demonic. She was just a very nasty person. And so she was very much against the paranormal as well, which is strange, but she was. And um, she was just, just a very nasty person. And I remember we lived in two or three different homes, you know, before we actually moved to a, a home that my dad had built. And she, um, you know, there was there was weird stuff there. There was, you know, covers being ripped off the bed, someone sitting on the bed, you know, the whispery thing in the face and, and whatnot, you know, stuff like that. And, and her dog, um, she had two dogs, her dogs would actually jump a barricade just to get in my room and like lay on, lay on my bed and like, like guard me all night. It was very strange. They would kind of growl and and that kind of thing, and I'd wake up to them growling, thinking, like, what the heck's going on, you know, and I would, you know, hear whispery voices in this house. I mean, you know, it's weird. Whatever house we moved in, if something was there to any extent, I would just know it, feel it, experience it. Sometimes it was horrible. Sometimes it wasn't as bad, but there was always, you know, something going on paranormal-wise. And um, so, yeah, the, those those years were really difficult. We ended up, my dad ended up uh, building a house out in a place called Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Farms in South Florida, and we lived out there, and as my dad's having the house built, we would go in toward the site, and it was out in a lot of acreage, you know, it was out in the boonies, and so uh, we would go out there and toward the site, and I remember just getting a creep. I was like, why do I not feel good about this? Why do I not like this land? But once again, I'm a little kid. I don't really understand much. You know, I'm probably 12 years old at this point. I don't even really understand what I'm feeling, but I know I don't like what I'm feeling. And I remember at one point, um, it was on the weekend, and I, you know, showed my mom. I was like, hey, mom, look at this. This is our new house, you know. And she actually, you know, walked through the whole place. And this was, like, when the, the foundation was laid and the, the, you know, the frames were up. And she was walking through, and I didn't say one thing to her. And she just looked at me, and she goes, I don't like this place. <laughs> she goes, I don't like this place. I'm just watching me. This is really not cool. There's just bad vibes here. And I just looked at her and I said, yeah, I know. I felt the same thing, you know. So um, as the house was being built, you know, after a while we moved in and same thing there. We just got the feeling that something was watching you. I had other people go, I don't like this place, you know, and it was weird. This was a new house. But if the land is sick, if the land is bad, it doesn't matter. Old house, new house, you're going to feel something. Whatever's on the land will come through. And so that, you know, was, was another part of the paranormal that I had to deal with. Something there would push you. It was just pretty awful stuff. Okay, so um, yeah, actually, it kind of reminds me of uh, Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Don't bury anything there; <laughs> the ground is sour, right? Right. But, so, yeah. Well, and uh, you know, yeah, he's, I, he's, this he's, is something that comes up um, a lot when we talk about you know you 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 hear in stories of people talk about ghosts and psychics and you know um, the you'll hear a skeptic say, "Oh well, you know, uh, uh, is there anywhere that a psychic can go where they?" Where, where they won't feel a presence or a spirit. And, you know, I mean, at this point, even modern science is beginning to recognize that, you know, there are perhaps um, other worlds that are mm -hmm. parallel to ours or close to ours that we just, we, we can't access in a physical way. Um, but they're, they're there nonetheless. And that they're, you know, research is going into that kind of thing. And, it's funny because that's a that's pretty much a staple of of you know all mythology around the world that there's this other realm you know whether it's called the you know the 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 dream world or the spirit realm or the afterlife or 
you know, you know where the where the god you know the realm of the gods there yeah. seems to be in in all mythologies and in many religions this other world that is just a, a step away from ours you know and if that's mm -hmm. the case then yeah people who are sensitive are probably going to uh, um, sense things in a lot of places because you know we're 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 sharing um, our living space with unseen things. And, and right. I, I always tell people too. I'm, I'm like, look, you know, I I don't I don't quite get it myself. You know, people think that because you're a medium and you've had paranormal experiences that you you know it all, and and you really don't. You know, I'm I'm sure even Lorraine Warren, you know, as as as, uh, as learned as she is and experienced as she is, she's still learning stuff. You know what I mean? The the the, the unseen world or whatever it is 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 ever i think it's ever evolving it's ever changing and i think we're, we're we're just you know scratching the surface when it comes to stuff like that and i and, and like you said you know people um they you know they they, they want to be safe and they want to be kind of comfortable and, and say no 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 only this exists you know and because it's safe for them it's scary to think that there might be something out there that you can't control and that you you know might hurt you or something you know what i mean so it it, it does disrupt their um you know sort of um, safe, secure little picture that they have for their life in the world and everything like that. And and um, so I, I fully believe, I tell people sometimes, they're like, well, you know, I, I don't really know about that kind of stuff. And I said, you know what, I don't know about it either. With all the paranormal experiences and whatnot that I've had over the years, I still don't get it. <laughs> you know, I still don't understand a lot of stuff. But you have to admit that there is something going on that, you know, you might not be able to explain. Is there a book split? I don't know. There could be. There could, you know, maybe it's just goofiness. I don't know. But there could be. Is there UFOs? Well, I've seen one, but I don't know if there really is little green men out there. Who knows? You know, there could, there very well could be. But just because, you know, you don't, you don't want to believe in it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, at least give room to stuff like that. Just think, hey, there could be a Bigfoot, but who knows? Maybe not. You know what I mean? So I always tell people don't close down to it. You know, just kind of just realize that there's probably something out there that, you know, you weren't taught in school or church or whatever, you know, and just kind of let, let it be that, you know. Well, can you imagine uh, the frame of mind of some of these skeptics, right? It's a Friday night. They're out for the weekend. They're going to McDonald's. They're having a Big Mac. They're flicking around on their phone. And someone's saying that they saw a shadow man somewhere. It's like, yep, it's bullshit. And they like their whole weekend is planned, and they're gonna go home. And like that's fucking bullshit because, some, right? Like that's their whole weekend. It's just to go home and and you know try and debunk mm -hmm. that. It just kind of blows my mind. But uh, getting back to your back to your story, <laughs> um, that third wife that your father had, that uh, you know the evil woman. And she died tragically, mm -hmm. and you kind of you mm -hmm. kind of touch on it uh, on the story on the website. But you know, you said that you still have dealings with her spirit today. Is that something that you can elaborate on? Yeah, you know, um, I actually knew when she had she actually got hit um, with a refrigerator truck. She was on duty. She was a law enforcement officer, and she actually got hit and and was in a kind of a vegetative state. Um, right when it happened, and um, she was hit so hard, you know, and the only thing that saved her was her bulletproof vest. And so she was, you know, rushed to the hospital, and I immediately knew, you know, talk about being psychic, I had no idea how I knew this, and I was, I was, uh, I think it was, gosh, all of 14 at that time, and I immediately panicked. Out of the blue, I'm, with, I'm in my mom's house, and I'm with my mom, and I start panicking. I said, Mom, something's wrong with Dad, something's wrong with Dad, and I kept seeing a car crash. And I thought, oh, my God, something's wrong with Dad. Dad's sick. Dad's dying. There's something wrong with Dad. So my mom, trying to calm me down, calls his office and says, can I talk to, can I talk to her father? And the, the co-worker literally hangs up on her. And she's like, what the hell? And so she called back and she goes, I want to talk to him now. And that's when he confessed and he said, oh, his wife was just involved in a car accident not 10 minutes ago, and he's on his way to the hospital. Oh, so wow. I knew, yeah, so I, for some reason, picked that up, just knew it was happening. I, I guess I could feel my dad's panic. My, my dad and I are really connected, so I always kind of know what he's going through. I knew when he was having a stroke. I knew when he was sick. I just knew. Um, I could always, you know, pick up on my dad. So I, I literally felt his panic, I guess, and, and I just knew something was not right. And um, so um, he had to make the decision. And she was very young. She was only, gosh, 32, 33, something like that. 
So uh, he had to make the decision. You know, the, the doctors told him, hey, look, you know, she's not going to make it. She's going to be in a vegetative state. This is not humane, you know, and she, she wanted, you know, she didn't want to be a veg- vegetable. You know, she wanted, you know, just let me go. So he made the decision, being the next of kin, to disconnect her, and they did. And my father, I'll actually tell you this really interesting side story. My father told me, he confessed to me many years later, here's a guy who doesn't believe in the paranormal. Talk about a skeptic, okay? He literally said, you know what, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, because I didn't talk to my dad too much about stuff like this. Especially, you know, maybe a little more when I got older, but... He said, you know something, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but he said the night that I disconnected her and I went home, finally got home, you know, did with, you know, deal with the paperwork and the police and the reports and the, everything, made all the arrangements, you know. And so by the time I got home, it was like 3.30, and he says, I'm exhausted, devastated. You know, he says, I, I don't even, you know, I'm just, my mind is whirling still at this point. He said, but my body is just spent. So he goes, I, I go to bed, and... He had plenty of room, or light in the room as well. He could see everything perfectly, you know. We had security lights outside, so he could see in his room perfectly. He said for two hours, something at the end of his bed, he said, I couldn't see anything. But he said, something at the end of my bed kept pulling my covers down off of me. And my dad was fully awake. He, He wasn't sleeping at all. He literally saw his covers being pulled off of his bed really slowly. For about two hours. He said for two. And my dad's a real big star. He's 6'2". He's like 260. My dad's a big guy. And he said for two hours, he struggled with this thing. Because as soon as he saw the covers being pulled off, he'd reach down and grab them, pull them up. And then something would just fight with him and pull these covers off of him. And he'd pull the blankets back up and they'd pull them back down. And he said for so like two hours, I struggled with this thing. So this thing finally left. And so for my dad to my dad to, to admit that it was just really weird, but I I think it might have been her. I don't know. That would be really creepy. If I I could tell you something that spooked me last week, and you'd laugh at me after, after hearing that. But uh, but yeah, that that is really creepy. I I wouldn't be able to wrestle I, with I, it. I know you, and I know that would be the last night that you spend in that house. <laughs> Yeah. You, you'd burn the sheets, you'd have the bed blessed, and you would move. <laughs> See, I would love it if I could visit someone else's house as long as I could leave it there when I came home. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. I That's why like the don't... places haunted D&Ds are so uh, popular. You know, people want to go there and experience it and they go home safe, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'd, lo- I'd love the experience as long as I can leave it there, you know? Like, I just don't want it to come home with me and for it to be a daily mm-hmm. A daily thing because nobody ever gets any good rest when that happens even people who love this stuff you know once their house is haunted, it's like god damn it how do i get out of here someone call a priest oh, no. <laughs> um so <clears throat> um so how did she because you said that her spirit still um torments you well you still have interaction with her i mean can you la- like how does that happen like what is it yeah that was um it was really interesting because like i said i had I had no love loss. When she passed away, I felt bad for my, my dad and my little brother, but I, I didn't have any personal feelings that were, you know, devastating, you know, and, and, and she never fostered any loving relationship with me. So I felt bad for a lot of years. I'm like, why do I, why am I not sad? You know? And, and, and I really felt horrible about that. It was like, should I, should I be sad? I'm not sad. But, um, but I wasn't happy, you know, either. But yeah, it was this really weird thing. I was, gosh, probably in my early 20s. And I never thought about her. I never, you know what I mean? Like when she was gone, she was gone. That was it. I, you know, like I said, uh, my father is a very strong person and he, you know, remarried again and he moved on and, and, um, you know, raised my little brother as, as best he could, you know, um, and, you know, we just kind of moved on with our lives, you know, and, and all that. But my father still had, you know, her belongings and he had given me, um, a few bits of her jewelry, um, to, you know, to, to have. And, and I kind of felt weird. I was like, I shouldn't have this, you know, but I, I kind of held on to it for a few years. And so anyways, um, it was really strange. Like I said, you know, I'm like, I, I don't, I never went searching for the paranormal. It kind of finds me. So. One day, I was bright daylight, daytime, I'm outside, I'm putting my groceries in the car, and literally, I felt like someone ran up behind me. So I turn around, and I'm freaking out, because I, I knew I felt someone behind me. Someone partially, I mean, it was like someone ran into me. 
and I turn around and I don't see a soul, but I feel something very, very evil. It's a very nasty, nasty feeling. And I was just like, what is that? And I just immediately saw her face and I thought, holy crap, is she, you know, knowing, knowing what little I know about the paranormal, is she coming back or what, you know, what's going on? But I saw her face. And I had this really strong feeling. At this point, I could definitely listen to, you know, I could fine tune, you know, and listen to what, you know, this whatever presence, uh, you know, I, I I could hear them. I could know what they were you know, saying. You know, why are you haunting here? And I could hear an answer. So at this point, I knew how to communicate. And so I looked directly at this thing, whatever it was, and I said, "What are you? And why are you here?" And immediately, I felt this. I saw. I knew it was her. And immediately, I felt her go. I bet you, yeah, you, you know, you thought I was gone, but I'm not gone. I'm still here, you know, kind of a taunting, nasty thing. And I was like, holy crap. So <laughs> I went home. I knew her birthday was in February and it was very close to that date. And so I checked online because I didn't remember when she passed away, but I checked online and her birthday and death date were only about maybe a month apart. And so uh, I realized I was right smack in the middle of those dates which I thought was really kind of eerie and strange, the timing of it. And so I, you know, had that weird feeling. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, I think, you know, Dad's wife, I think she, you know, I think she, she kind of walked up to me and she goes, but it's definitely possible. It could definitely happen. And that went away. Then a few months later, I'm getting ready for bed. You know, i got work tomorrow. And so I'm, you know, brushing my teeth and, you know, getting ready and, I get into bed and I'm barely in bed. I'm literally like kneeling in bed with the covers up, getting ready to, you know, snuggle in. And literally I feel something in my room and it's sitting in like the corner where the computer is. And I'm looking and I'm like, what is that? It was so evil. When you're a medium, you can tell immediately if it's a demon or not because of the vibes it radiates. It's just pure negativity, pure evil. You just know it's a demon. You don't know, you know, you don't question it. And this thing was so evil, I thought it was a freaking demon. I thought, oh, my God, what is this thing, you know? What what have I done to invite this thing in here? It was, you know what I mean? I was like, what did I do? And I kept feeling this thing. I, you know, kind of got into bed. and I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to be scared. I'm going to, I'm just going to chill, you know. I'm just going to sit here and get quiet and see what the thing is. And literally, this thing had so much hate for me. I'm like, what is this thing? Is it a demon? What the heck is this? And literally, as I'm sitting there and I'm kind of feeling it, feeling it, feeling it, I realize it's her. And I thought, oh, oh my God, only only one person on this planet hated me as much as she did. And that was what I was feeling at that moment. I felt pure hatred, pure evil, pure just like, I just want you dead kind of feeling. And I just got real brave. And I thought, you know what? Sit there all night. I ain't going to be scared of you. <laughs> I just lay down, turned over and went to sleep and... Somehow, my not fearing it, not giving it attention, just kind of made it fade away. But it seemed like it wanted to make its presence known. It, and it, uh-huh. it almost seems like, well, I mean, she sounds like a nasty person anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's almost like when she died, um, you know, because I guess she was so dark. I mean, I've I've heard this said before that uh, some people when they die. They're afraid to go into the light to be exposed for what they are. They're afraid to be judged or afraid to be analyzed. And they, they mm. stick around with all their old baggage. and they, They're stuck in the same place. I just don't understand why she was so hung up on you. Um, like, and, and I'm not saying that she's not. I just I don't understand mm-hmm. why. Like, in, in the afterlife, I mean, she must know she, she's dead. Um why she would spend all of her time, um, mm-hmm. you know, just just being that way to really, I mean, I like it. It doesn't sound at all like you impede it. You know, I mean, she's still married your dad. I mean, she's still, you know what I mean. It's not like you got in the way yeah. of that. Or I just don't understand where her um, is like blind hatred comes from. Well, um, I'm not really sure. I think she just. Maybe I was a reflection of my mother, you know what I mean? And and it was a reminder that she, you know, wasn't the first woman my dad was with. You know, any sometimes women are really possessive and they freak out if, you know, the, the husband, the, the you know, the, the, the current husband has something to do with the ex-wife in some way. They, they don't want him talking to them. They don't want, you know what I mean? And maybe it was that. There was just something very, very nasty about her. She didn't want me to get ahead. And funny thing that you mentioned this particular thing because 
I actually, um, a few nights after this, I actually had um, a really horrible, horrendous nightmare with her. And it was this experience where I was, uh, there was a cabinet, and my, there was like jewelry and money and different things, and her and my dad were actually laying in bed together. And she, I think in some ways, was, I don't know, still possessive over my dad. Like, like you know, like spirits are possessive over home. You know, they, they, they try to scare you away because it's their home. Yeah. I think she died so quickly, young, tragically, unfinished business. Because when I left, I left clandestinely. When I left that home, because I was already living with them, I actually snuck to live with my mom again. And so I didn't say, hey, bye, guys, I'm leaving. I snuck out of there um, for the, the, the summer and didn't go back. So I, I think... My dad's wife had that sort of unfinished business. I got away. She wasn't able to torment me. You know what I mean? I was like a sole focus every single day. This woman would torment me in some way. So I had, I had escaped. So she had this unfinished business, I think, in her soul, her brain, whatever. And so she died. So, I mean, you know, all these stories of people dying tragically, unexpectedly, you know, young, unfinished business. And then they linger. Perfect. I mean, I was like, yeah, that's totally what's going on. And this one nightmare I had one night, it was so terrifying. I sat right up in bed. And basically, my dad gets out of this bed, and he goes over to the cabinet and starts handing me jewelry, money, all kinds of stuff. And she literally gets out of the bed and stands right between us and starts screaming bloody murder. Don't you dare give her that. Don't you dare give her that. I'm going to make sure she gets nothing. <sighs> you know, just screaming bloody murder. You know, was stating that she did not want me to succeed in life. She didn't want me to get ahead. She didn't want me to have anything good. I didn't deserve it. She hated me. I mean, all of it was just spewing out of her. And wow. so, um, yeah, so I had this nightmare. And I, you know, I kind of, at one point, I was kind of, um, you know, kind of feeling out the whole thing. And I kind of said, you know, why is she still lingering? This is so weird. And I, you know, I kept just wondering, and I felt like she kind of said, you know what, I could have made it, I could have made it out of that vegetative state, but your dad pulled the plug on me, and I didn't get a chance, and I could feel the anger in her that she was not able to let go, because she felt like she could have come out of it or something, you know what I mean? She, she felt like she, she had, she had a chance, and my dad cut that chance. It and almost so seems my like dad, karma. Like that whole well, yeah. thing, that whole thing that happened to her almost sounds like karma, you know, like she was obviously a terrible person and she lost, you know, her life at a very young age. But uh, I wonder if, if all that negativity, I really do think that when you're really negative, you draw negative things to you. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that, it, it, you know, it's hard to not be negative if, if you're depressed or if you're whatever, but it's different acting on it. Um, like it's different being depressed, for example, than it is to uh, act on it at other people, like projecting it on other people. Um, I think that's more of a conscious um, action that well, people when make. You're, when you're reinforcing that negativity in your own life. And, you know, I mean, let, let's face it. Um, death is probably, I mean, I've never, it's never happened to me, so I don't know, but the process of dying is probably a a confusing and and shocking experience and you know for a psyche for a mind to cross over from being alive to being dead it, you know I, I i'm just going to go ahead and assume that it's it's stressful and confusing and mm -hmm. you know um the things that you bring with you the things that you're going to be able to hold on to are going to be, you know, those very powerful emotions, you know, and, and the two most powerful ones being love and hate um, and, you know, jealousy being a, a, a you know, component of hate. Um, you know, I, I guess that would be the answer right there. You have mm -hmm. somebody holding on to a lot of resentment and jealousy and, 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 feeling like, you know, they didn't get their due, they didn't have a chance to, you know, and, and well, it seems like the spirit mm -hmm. has, uh, um, has projected all of that, you know, frustration and, and, and jealousy and rage and, and, you know, kind of targeted you, um, just as, you know, as, as, as part of that, 
you know, what what are they going to hang on to is going to be the 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 most prominent, most powerful emotions, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. When you when you when you watch these paranormal shows and, you know, these mediums talk to these spirits that are so territorial, you know, this person died you know, either young or old, but they, they still had like a lot of unfinished business, you know what I mean, in their heart. They still had a, a mission and they didn't complete it and or something, you know, they had something to say or something to do and they didn't get to finish. And and so, you know what I mean, the this, this spirit just kind of lingers because it's just kind of like sitting on that. It's like, I didn't get a chance, I didn't get a chance. And that's what I kept feeling from her. She was just, and, and strangely, my father has had, in the same house that he's lived in for the last 20 years, he's had some very odd paranormal activity to the point where I think that she might be doing something there, you know, kind of tormenting him in a way, you know. So I, I just I don't think she's at rest. Well, uh, that, uh, you know, looks, <laughs> I'd <laughs> say it looks good on her, but uh, that might be a little bit uh, strong. Um <clears throat> Now, moving on from that, uh, you had experiences even recently, um, mm -hmm. and you're in L.A. now? Yeah, I live in Los Angeles. Okay, so let, let's let's jump there because, um, you know, all these stories take place when you're uh, younger, and now you're mm -hmm. older, you're not in the same environment. Um, you're still having experiences, though, so you're still plugged in. So let's mm -hmm. go, uh, let, let, let's start with that. I, I believe you said... Um, and I would never mind. I'm looking at the wrong thing. But you were in a building with uh, eight units, mm -hmm. and and half of those units were uh, vacant at a time when some things happened. Right. I uh, four years ago I moved to Los Angeles um, to pursue film, and so um, I was starting my life over. And you know, like I said, I'm still you know very empathic. I still felt stuff, and you know, talk to friends and tell people you know do readings and whatnot. But you know, like I said, I don't pursue it. I just, I feel like if it's going to happen, it's going to find me. So I was just going about my life, started my life over in Los Angeles, you know, 3,000 miles away from anything I ever knew. I was just kind of starting over. I just wanted a fresh start. You know, I needed to get out of uh, Florida. It was a bit stagnant for me. So I moved here and I found this great apartment. Um, it was eight units, very small, which is great, nice and quiet. And, uh, you know, there was... Uh, I lived in one unit, and of course, there was four. At one point, I, you know, I lived there for years, never had a paranormal experience in that place, never felt creeped out. If there was something creepy there, I would have seen it, known it, trust me, I know. And so I had not felt anything in that place three years, literally. That place was a peaceful little sanctuary. Then, all of a sudden, I noticed that uh, there were a lot of vacancies in the building. Um, there was literally four units that were just vacant for, like, months. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of people moved in. And it was like, oh, okay, cool, we've got neighbors, you know. And then literally out of the blue, this was like maybe a year and a half, two years ago, literally out of the blue, all of a sudden, I'm starting to get creeped out in my place. And I'm like, this is weird. Why am I getting creeped out? I've never gotten creeped out. You know, this, this is ridiculous. You know, my place is always safe. I'm always praying through the place. I got my holy water. You know, I got my, I got, you know, my little, you know, amulets and things, you know. So nothing should be here. What the heck is going on? And literally, I just kept getting creepy. I kept seeing little flinty, like little uh, little flints of shadows in, in the corner of my eye. And I'm thinking, once again, you know, I'm always, I'm, actually, I'm kind of a skeptic. I kind of go, hey, you know what? It's probably nothing, whatever, you know. And I kind of dismissed it, but it got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then there was this one area of my bedroom that I kept feeling something. I felt like someone was standing right there watching me. I thought, this is crazy, I'm nuts, I'm, you know, I'm please, you know, whatever, or you go back to bed, you know. But I kept waking up in the middle of the night, I kept seeing something, feeling something, like, it was standing there wanting to tell me something. I thought, good Lord, what is this? And I have a dog named Winston, and he always stares at this one area of the, 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 the bedroom. Same area that I felt something in, I'd be watching TV, and I just happen to look over, and Winston is looking at that one corner, and I'm like, oh my God, he sees it now. And so I kept feeling this thing, kept seeing this thing. I thought, what the heck is going on? And so I finally just kind of sat down and said, hey, you look, okay, if I'm a medium, I should know what the heck is going on in my own house. So I, I stopped, got quiet, and I kept seeing this thing. And I don't watch horror movies, so I'm not aware of what the current monster is. You know what I mean? Who's scaring people, you know, Chucky or Freddy or whoever, you know, I'm not really up to date on all that stuff. So um, I kept seeing this girl. 
with dark hair and her face, and it looked, and I kind of thought, is that from a horror movie? What is this thing? And I found out it was from The Ring, the girl from The Ring. I don't know her name or anything like that. I don't know the story, but I just know the image. And I thought, wow, I'm seeing this. Okay, I'm definitely crazy. This is, you know, this is weird. And so I kind of dismissed it. And then one night, um, as I was trying to figure out what this thing was, it couldn't articulate itself. And when you're talking to a spirit that has sort of mental deficits in life, you know, maybe they were uh, mentally handicapped handicapped or something in that in life in death they cannot communicate it's very difficult for them and so you just get bits and pieces if you get anything at all so you you have a person that's kind of just you have a spirit literally standing there and they're trying to talk to you but they can't just like they could in, in life it's very strange so I kind of felt that and I kind of thought oh my gosh that's really strange you know so one night I'm you know the tv's not on I have one little light on and I'm sitting in bed and I'm literally you know just petting my dog and I look up and I literally, it's the first time in my whole life, surprisingly, I actually saw this very solid shadow figure walk right past me and did, did just disappear. And I was freaked out. I was like, what the hell? And I got up and I was like, okay, I'm not going to freak out over this. I'm going to find out what's going on. So I tried to debunk it and it wasn't me. I wasn't moving. It wasn't, you know, anyone's shadow. It wasn't the dog. It wasn't anything. I couldn't explain it, and so I got my holy water, and I did a, you know, nice little prayer through the whole place, and for some reason, this thing would not leave, and I prayed, I said scriptures, I said this, I put, you know, salt, and this, and that, this thing would not leave, and so I just kind of just try to deal with it, you know, like, okay, whatever, I'm not going to be afraid of this, and it's just a big mystery, you know, what is the thing, who is it, is it attached to maybe one of the new tenants that moved in, maybe it's something like that, I don't know. So one night, my friend Joe, he's in film as well, and he was like, hey, can I crash on your couch? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, come on over. So he's exhausted. He falls asleep on the couch. I go in my room, and I'm no sooner in bed, like 15 minutes, you know. I'm laying there, and all of a sudden I hear, Marie, Marie. I mean, I hear bloody, you know, blood, bloody, blood-curdling scream from the, the living room. I run out there, and Joe is sitting on the edge of the couch just gasping for air. And he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I said, what? What's going on? He said, something just tried to strangle me. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? He said, I was laying there, and I felt something weird enter the room. He said, I don't know what it was, but I did. The, the, the vibe changed in the room. He says, I looked up, opened my eyes, I looked up, and there was this girl with dark hair. He saw the same exact thing I saw. This girl with dark hair hanging in her face. She was floating above me. And I said, you're kidding me. What was going on? And he, he didn't know what was going on. So he told this thing because he thought, well, maybe this thing is protecting Marie and it thinks I'm trying to hurt her or something. So he literally told this thing, look, I'm not here to hurt her. And this thing, he said, just got very angry and started to choke him and suck the air out of his lungs. And he, you know, he just could feel like something around his neck trying to strangle him. And he said, as soon as he screamed my name, this thing flew out the window. Sorry. And so that... Yeah, I, I, and I had weird things like electrical things in the in the house where, you know, my TV would shut off by itself, the lights would shut off. It was just very odd. So. Yeah, I'd say I'd be pretty mad if all my <laughs> electrical uh, equipment was shutting off since I seem to live in front of a monitor. Um, <laughs> so I guess Joe's not coming back, <laughs> right? Like, no, no. He, yeah, and it's funny because he was he was not like terrified by things. He was actually quite like calm about it. And I was just like, I was so angry at that point. I just started, I said a prayer. I was like, look, you don't deserve to, you don't, you don't belong here. You know, I didn't invite you here. You don't belong here. Get out of here. And literally my, my, who is now my ex, he moved in and I was just happy not to be alone in the place, you know, he moved in and at first he was totally fine. And then literally within a month or two, he started acting so completely insane. It was terrifying, and I, you know, he's a, a you know, ex-com, you know, combat vet. He was in the army, and I thought, you know, for sure it's PTSD. And I, you know, discussed that with other people, and I said, yes, it definitely sounds like PTSD. But I think maybe whatever was in the, the apartment maybe exacerbated it because he was completely fine until he moved in, and it was a, literally like a month or two, and he started talking to himself. He started getting very violent, very angry. Uh, very aggressive, screaming, blacking out, acting out, acting crazy. And then, you know, and then there were times when uh, he would, um, 
be, you know, sleeping with his eyes open, talking, you know, and then there was one night where I literally heard a noise in the room and I could have sworn someone was in the room with us. I mean, it was, it was all very strange and I eventually had to move from there. So uh, I don't have to deal with that anymore. But yeah, I mean, that was the most recent experience that I've had. So is there a, like, you I mean, you meet a lot of people. Um, everybody meets a lot of people. And of course, one of the interesting things for you is that, uh, you know, you, you might get some tingles every now and then. You might uh, pick up on something from anybody. Do you ever find, like, is it common or, like, like when you meet people, have you met very many people that, like, you felt had attracted spirits to them or, like, um, like how common is that if, if you've picked up on that? Like, um, I, I think it's fairly common. Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm still learning all of this. I'm still evolving. I'm still finding out stuff. You know, I'm still learning about my own journey. And so uh, from my own experiences and then also talking to other people in the paranormal, it's definitely possible to be, you know, dragging an old family member along or just happen, you just happen to attract a spirit. You know, I, I don't know really how it works, I think. But I, I do think it's very possible. I think, you know, someone might might uh, point themselves to you as being your guardian, but maybe they're not really helping you. You know, I've seen enough paranormal shows and talked to people where they said, oh, yeah, I had, I had a spirit following me, and the spirit was telling the medium or exorcist or whatever that it was supposed to help me, and it wasn't helping me. It was like, you know, it thought it was helping me, but it wasn't. And, you know, it was actually scaring me or something, you know what I mean? So I think you have... Uh, people in the spirit, you know, disembodied, you know, you've got spirits, you've got people that were once alive, now they're passed away, they've got, you know, all this, I guess, time, you know, or, or they don't know that they've passed away or that they have unfinished business, and I think they're really just kind of milling about sometimes, and I think, you know, going through life, whatever, you know, say you go, I mean, how many stories have you heard of people, you know, going into old buildings, and then after they come out, you know, say a haunted house or something like that, they come out, all of a sudden start having paranormal activity in their house. You know what I mean? So I think definitely you can, you know, if you don't have the proper protection, you know, as far as, you know, having metals or spraying or whatever, or having those things around your home, you know, people have to, you know, protect their home and their living space and, and whatnot. And I definitely encourage that, you know, people all the time, you know, they kind of act think it's silly, you know, but you really should say a prayer over your place. You really should have the holy water and the metals and things like that because you just never know what you pick up. You know, if you can pick up germs, yeah, I think you can pick up spiritual stuff, too. And I think, you know, that kind of stuff does, can follow people, especially if they're not protected. If they have a weak, like a weak spot or they have some kind of vulnerability, some kind of issue, I definitely think something can attach itself. Well, one of the things I wonder about, um, one of the last things you said is that uh, when you moved, you had a string of bad luck. And that's something that I can relate to because I've had stretches in my life um where it was just like bad luck and just negative things that would happen. And I wonder if it's possible that, uh, you know, you could be, because, I mean, it's very, very, you could graph it, right, from like a, a regular life and then right down in the hole for a while and then you're back up. And I wonder if, like, um, it's possible, like, I'm not intuitive, like, I, I don't really pick up on stuff. I'm not, I have no psychic ability whatsoever, so I wouldn't know. But I wonder if it's possible that uh, someone like me or anybody could just, uh, you know, you, somehow you, you attach these things to you and it just has this effect on your mm -hmm. life, this negative, you know, and it just pulls mm -hmm. it in. Do you know what I mean? Like it just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely feel that if you don't, if you don't do protective measures, you know, take protective measures every, every day, especially, um, you know, you and Ryan both, you know, being kind of interested in the paranormal. I think people like us that, <clears throat> you know, things kind of tend to find us or, or we tend to search things out. You know, we're all kind of like paranormal detectives, you know, we're always searching, we're always, you know, talking about things and stuff like that. And I think that kind of stuff can even attract them as well. So I think, you know, the best thing for you, for you to do is just find some way to kind of, do some cleansings and, you know, whatnot, and, and kind of do some protective stuff around your home and, and whatnot. I, you know, who knows? Maybe you are sensitive and you just kind of don't really know it. You know what I mean? Maybe you do kind of pick up on things, you know, and uh, or, or maybe you're just, uh, you just tend to be maybe a little vulnerable or something. Maybe, you know, you need uh, someone to pray over you or someone to, you know what I mean, a cleansing or something like that, you know. Sometimes I think Ryan cursed me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why would I do something like that? Well, not on purpose, but I mean, let's face it. You're always poking where you shouldn't be poking, and you tell me, and you get me looking into it, and then later, you're just like that guy in Pet Cemetery. It's like he leads his dog dies or something like that, and or his cat, sorry, and he leads him like all day through the woods up over these like treacherous cliffs and everything like that. They bury his cat. They get home. It's nighttime. And then he tells them that they shouldn't have done it because the ground is sour. I was like, what the fuck was that? Like, I just spent the whole day like up in the woods climbing mountains. And now you're telling me that it was a big mistake. Like, <laughs> that's Ryan, right? Oh, we should do th- we should do this. It'd be a good idea. And then later it's like, oh, yeah, but now you're vulnerable. You know, shit's going to attack you now. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's been my experience. So I, well, you know, I just can't help myself. I, I... <laughs> I, well, it's, I really it's been can't. an interesting ride. I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, well, know. I mean, at least you can say that. You know, it's never boring. <laughs> so, can you tell? Does Ryan have demons swimming <laughs> in his body? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did sense that he was he was a bit interested in, in stuff like that, like maybe horror movies, and he was, he was a bit more into it than you were. So it was, it was kind of interesting that you said that because I kind of sensed that too. He he might be more kind of uh, like you said more more poking into those kinds of things. Oh, he you know? does. Like I love watching it at a distance. I love reading it. I, like I probably watch more horror movies and stuff like that. But I mean Ryan, um, you know, I mean let's face it. I mean he he was the one who on his own before I met him went and decided to become a Satanist, <laughs> right? Like mm-hmm. the very the very leftist of everybody else's, uh, you know, everything that you've ever been warned about. <laughs> Ryan's went and did it. It's like, oh yeah, it's bad, hey. Uh, where gonna, where do I sign up? You know, what should I do? And, and that that's and that's just not this stuff. I mean, that's everything. Ryan, wouldn't you agree to that? Oh, <laughs> most certainly. I'm 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 definitely, um, I'm I'm definitely of the the personality type that if there's something that I'm not supposed to do, uh, I'm the first one in the lineup to do it. If there's some button I'm not supposed to press or you know, some some name I'm not supposed to say or some book I'm not supposed to read from. from. You know, I'm the guy in those horror movies. Um, Making them. Certain. And I see, just, so you're you the know, first it, one to die in a horror movie. <laughs> it, well, you know what? I, I, I don't know if I would be. I, I, I would probably cause the death of all the people around right. <laughs> Because you're, but I'm just, you're, you're the guy that, that, that unleashes the demon that kills the people, exactly. right? <laughs> he opened the exactly. box. I open the box, what, what, whatever the case. I'm just, I'm, I'm insatiable, insatiably curious, and, um, you know, for me, mm-hmm. I, 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 I really, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've spent my whole life um, railing against, you know, anything that's supposed to be sacred or, or this or that. I, and, you know, if you're not supposed to do it, I just, I, I can't help, but, but, you know really mm-hmm. get in there and you know whether it's mm-hmm. you know spells or forbidden knowledge or you know anything forbidden it's it's you know that's 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 exactly what i want to be uh i, I want to have my hands into so um, you're a bad man mm-hmm. and for me see <clears throat> i like I, I get to do that vicariously through you without having any of the repercussions and that's one mm-hmm. of the things that i like i guess you could say i'm cautious um and I guess a little bit smarter about it because I let Brian just <laughs> run in head first. And so what was it like? You know, <laughs> tell me everything. Well, just... you know, yeah, I mean, everyone's different and that's part of their journey. I've met, I've met Satanists before and I've met, you know, people that, you know, would never go near that. So I think all of this is part of the journey. Sometimes you got to jump in head first, you know what I mean? To, to, you know, to kind of uh, find out what it's all about, you know, especially when you've had paranormal experiences. After that one day in the library where I looked up, you know, ghosts, that was it for me. You know, I was just kind of hungry after that. And I was just like, what is this? And I was kind of hungry for what I was going, you know, for, for, for answers to what I was going through. I still, like I said, you know, now we have so many more resources. We got podcasts, we got TV shows, we got more books, we've got all kinds of stuff. But at that time, I didn't have anything. I had these, you know, old books from like the 70s that were talking about the Amityville stuff. And so I had just that to go on. And so I would, you know, just read these things and just be like, wow, so is this what I'm going through? You know, and I still didn't know. I still didn't understand it because I didn't have someone standing there saying, yeah, you're, you know, this is a demon, this is a ghost, you're going through this, you know. So sometimes, you you, you know, I, I see you guys as kind of like paranormal detectives. You guys just want to dig and just find out 
you know, all that you can about it, you know, and, you know, just hearing a story isn't good enough. You guys got to find out like what it's, what it's all about, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I think the the best thing about today is the internet because it, you know, a lot of these topics were always taboo and, uh, you know, just not taken seriously. But with the internet, uh, people from all different walks of life have been able to share their stories and connect. And, and now, like, I mean, anybody can go and kind of um, research this stuff. And there's just no end to the amount of, of uh, you know, mm-hmm. stories and stuff. And so, like, it, as rare as it is, there's still a lot of it, right? I mean, there's just a lot of people who have had experiences. So... That's a plus. Um, so no mm-hmm. more of the uh, the ghost books. But uh, Marie, is there anything that you wanted to add um, before we clue this up? Um. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I just want to say thank you guys for for doing this because I think it's a really awesome thing. Like you said, you know, um, all the people out there that grew up like me, you know, that had experiences or having experiences now. Um, you know, there's, there's finally a place for answers, you know, and when we kind of all come together, the internet is bringing us all together. And when we come together, we can help each other, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys are doing a really awesome thing. Um, I did kind of feel some stuff about you guys. If you, you know, I, I, like you said, you kind of wanted me to kind of see if I, you know, if I felt something fine, if not, whatever, but, um, I'm I did all, some little things. <laughs> I'm all ears. I did some little things. And it's, it's a little hard to kind of, um, kind of like, you know, do a cold reading like this because I kind of would need to spend more time with you guys. But for Ryan, I felt kind of like, and I could be, like I said, I could be dead wrong, but I, I just felt like um, he's kind of like a self-professed nerd kind of thing. And I, I feel like he, um, I feel like you are too in a way, you know, and I feel like um, he's almost like a gentle giant. Like, you know, people kind of are a little scared of him maybe, <laughs> but they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I, well, actually, I get accused of that all the time of being the gentle giant. It's very true. I mean, he got a very uh, ominous way that he he likes to present himself, but he's a big baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I felt like. I, I I felt like Ryan was kind of like people kind of didn't know how to like take him. Sometimes they were kind of scared of him. Like he's this you know kind of scary Viking type guy, you know, kind of looking. And so they were just kind of like, like not sure Viking. about him. Yeah, he has like a Viking feel about him, but um, but yeah, like I thought he like this, like like maybe swords or knives or something, you know, and armor, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I feel like he likes animals. Um, like I said, I feel like people kind of like don't know how to take him at first, you know, but he's actually kind of like a really nice guy, and he and is. I feel like uh, he's a. Uh, I feel like he he, he might be uh, like maybe in his younger days, maybe he was bullied at school or something. I felt I felt kind of like a bit of sadness in your guys' eyes. I felt. It's in both of you, and um, I felt like, you know, at first he might be kind of guarded with people, like a little cautious with people. Like, he's got kind of like a proven, like, like circle of friends that he knows he can trust. And, um, you know, he's kind of maybe too trusting in the past, and so now, like, he kind of, like, is a little guarded and maybe kind of, like, you know, wants people to kind of prove their loyalty and trustworthiness before he kind of lets them in that circle. You know, maybe he was a little too forgiving or something, but... Um, but yeah, I kind of felt that like he might be a little guarded or something. But yeah, I felt like he was kind of like into, and I kind of, and it's so strange you said that, I kind of felt like he was into the more darker stuff. Like he, you know, kind of liked delving into those things, you know. So. Ryan, I think I, she's uh, right on with that. Like, well, I, I, I right got to say, as far as it comes for, for psychic stuff, I mean, I love paranormal and, and conspiracy and UFOs and all that stuff. I, but I'm 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 the most highly skeptical of um, you know people who claim to be psychic, and and, and I really have to say that um, I'm 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 pretty floored right now. Uh, you've you've really you, you've really nailed uh, pretty much everything you said. There was was pretty much on the nose. Awesome. Um, it was. It, it was. Uh, like very, very specific. I, I, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I, I really, you know, I, I mean, Will and I spoke about uh, the possibility of you, you, uh, you know, doing a few notes on, on a bit of a cold reading using our pictures and uh, making a few notes. And then, you know, at the end of the podcast, maybe shooting a few things out. And um, I really didn't know what to expect at all. But I, I, I have to honestly, honestly say that. I am uh, very impressed. That was 
that was right on the nose. Uh, <laughs> oh wow, um, great! <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Like, as 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 far as skeptics are concerned, you know, I mean, as much as I I love paranormal and stuff like that, you know, when somebody says they're going to a psychic, I you know, I, I usually don't say anything, but inside I scoff. I'm like, yeah, you know, go pay 300 bucks for somebody to say something really general about you. But I mean, mm-hmm. those, you said some pretty specific things there and, uh, um, you, <laughs> you nailed every <laughs> single one of them. Um, wow. wow. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, you know, like I said, I to do a cold reading. is a little hard cause it's like kind of quick and it's kind of like, okay, tell me about me, you know? And I'm kind of like, Oh, okay. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. And like I said, I can further this if you want, you know, down the road or whatever. Some people are scared, but you know what? I'm the same way as you, Ryan. Um, I have yet to meet a psychic that can actually read me. A lot of people can't read me. It's very strange. They'll sit there and tell me all kinds of stuff. I'm like, nope. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, I, I'm the same way too. And my mom is so cool. Cause my mom was a very sort of, um, she had a lot of integrity and she would always watch some of these psychics on TV and she would say, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, you're not supposed to do that. You know, she would like call them out. And so, you know, I think to find a real true psychic person out there is, is, is kind of few and far between. I, I think, you know, like you said, it's, I, I kind of scoff too, you know, you didn't see a, like an early death for me or something like that. Did you? Like, no, <laughs> no, not at all. I knew you I were going to ask that, you hypochondriac. <laughs> I felt like, yeah, I felt like you, it was kind of true. I felt like you were more of the scaredy cat in this whole thing. You're like you were more, like you're more cautious. And it's so funny you said that because I did feel that. I felt like um, you're more quiet. You're more like, you look kind of like retreat. You're very kind of creative. You get other outlets. I feel like I kind of saw you playing like a black guitar and I see you like writing songs and I feel like you kind of have to, like, get away from it all for a little bit. you got to, like, recharge your batteries. And sometimes just 20, 30 minutes, an hour of playing the guitar and singing or whatever just kind of, like, recharges you. You just kind of feel, okay, all right, I can I can go on now, you know. And I felt like um, you might play a few instruments. I'm not sure. I feel like, you you know, you're kind of musically inclined. And, and I feel like um, it's weird you said you were sick early because I, I wrote down, I said, yeah, I feel like you were kind of sad lately. Like, you have been concerned about someone's health. <laughs> so I don't know if you're worried about your own health or someone else's health, but you've got kind of a lot on your plate right at the moment. I feel like you're kind of exasperated. I kind of saw a lot of stress in your face and, and you know, kind of worrying about the future, worrying about the unknown, kind of, you know, can bring the candle both in, kind of not really sure about the future, what's going to happen with this job and this thing and this person. And, oh, my gosh, is this, is this person going to die? When You know I mean? And uh, I thought you... um I thought you guys both on some level, you know, different things. I thought you guys are kind of, what I wrote down was like a skeptic at heart. Like when you guys, like you hear, you hear a story and you're like, ah, I got to research that. I got to find out more about that. And um, I also feel like you guys want to maybe possibly like expand the show, maybe even do something recorded, like, like television, something like that. Like you guys have plans, ideas, hopes, you know, to, to kind of further this because you really do want to reach like a bigger audience you're like man if we could just do this we would reach more people and that would be awesome you know and it's, it's really cool because i don't sense a vibe with you guys that it's like all about fame you guys want to be you know famous and it's all about you you know i feel more like you guys are very much into bringing the paranormal into everyday vernacular our everyday life and making it not so taboo you know making it very like an accepted part of life and you guys are you know, kind of like you guys should be going to like conventions and, you know, doing talks and lectures and stuff like that. Like you guys should be doing more of that. I feel like if you guys have the opportunity to pursue that or do that. Definitely do it. Cause I definitely feel like it would be a very good thing. I feel like you guys could uh, reach a lot of people, help a lot of people, uh, encourage a lot of people, you know, people like me that have had experiences and don't know what the hell they're going through. You guys can bring some peace of mind to them, you know? And I feel like you guys are, just kind of tapping. I think you are just kind of scratching the surface of this whole podcast thing. I think you really should and could, you know, go on to make this bigger and, and more and do some really awesome stuff with it. Well, let, let me just, uh, I guess, reflect on what you said, because uh, very true. Um, <clears throat> a lot of it, actually. So, some yeah. things are going to be more impressive than others. Some things only Ryan knows. Um, yeah. But uh, now, one thing that is true like i do have a it's kind of it's kind of black it's mostly black with little accents of gray um guitar that i do i i i actually um 
was a musician for most of my life um and I was uh, you know I was signed to a record label for a while and stuff like that so I mean while it's true that you could probably find out that I did music you wouldn't like I have no pictures of me in my current guitar right now um <laughs> Also, creative outlets, that's like my biggest thing, always has been in everything from music to photography to art to uh, just everything artistic is, is what I've jumped into. But one of the more, I guess, interesting things that you touched on was uh, you said that like lately, like lately I had, a, you know, a, I guess a, a depression or, a, you know, something like that. And that's true. That is actually something that... Uh, I've been dealing with uh, very much so in the last little while, um, and um, yeah, that, that's actually a, a big part of something that I went through recently. So that that's interesting that you that's not something that I, I publicly uh, went out there and said. So it's, it's mm-hmm. interesting that you that you picked up on that. And yep, I definitely feel like I got a lot on my plate, and uh, yeah. I, So uh, echoing Ryan, I guess, is is that, uh, you know, very, very much so on the money there um, with all of those things. And I'm glad that you didn't tell me I'm going to be dead in two years. (laughs) (laughs) Because he would very much believe you and you'd be counting down the days and the seconds. I would be. Something that was. You'd be in the corner rocking like, oh, I got four days left. I I, I would. I'd have a calendar. (laughs) My my death calendar, and like yeah. the the irony is that uh, you know where I work, because I, I work at a newspaper company, and and every day, um, for like the last year, I've done like the majority of obituaries and and built the pages of obituaries and reading, you know, all, like there's so many people that die young and and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and, and so it's it's something that. Uh, it, I never would have guessed how many people die in, in, in a run of a day, especially in a smaller place. Uh, it, when I picture the globe now on a spiritual level, I, I can almost picture hundreds of thousands of millions of souls just leaving the planet like a, a constant stream. That just so many people die, and so many people are young. Like, oh my God! Like I thought, like the the average was like. Uh, 75 or something like that but I'm telling you I see a lot of people that are like in their 30s and 40s and like middle yeah, age what well, does that mean anymore yeah, right yeah. Mm-hmm. midlife well, crisis right. is 15 <laughs> right I, mean, <laughs> I want my so, fancy car I, I don't know if we 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 ever mentioned this um but it, you know it's it's funny that you mentioned you know uh, um about the the idea of a of a TV program. I don't know. Did we ever mention this, Will? I don't think we ever did on on the internet. Like me but, and you talked so, about it. You, oh yeah, yeah. But I don't know if we've ever mentioned it on the podcast. But we, um, just a little over a year ago. Um, Actually, it wasn't a year ago. It was almost a year ago. It it was like right before Christmas. I remember we were still following up. It, well, yeah, yeah. It started almost almost a year ago. That's that's right because it was right when I started my the job I'm currently on, I'm currently doing right now. So I remember when, when I first started, that was that was the big thing that was going on. Well, well yeah, so we we we, uh, we came. I don't know how close we came, but we you know we we came close to actually having a a TV show. Yeah, ba- basically what happened was, um, I'm not going to say her name for privacy reasons, but uh, I was emailed by. Uh, Someone who worked at a company called Ping Pong Productions. P-Pong. P-Pong. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't stand, it stands for Ping Pong, though. A- anyway, um, they got a, like a, a, about a dozen different uh, paranormal shows on TV, like Finding Bigfoot and, you know, a bunch of these other ones. And they were doing a, a, a brand new show, or they were, they were going to pitch one about cryptozoological creatures and uh, you know, they were, they were basically looking for, you know, the, the people for the show and they were going to fly them all over the world, um, you know, to investigate these different cryptids. And like we, we had a, a back and forth for a couple months. Like we had to do like these uh, webcam interviews and headshots and, and, you know, just, you know, answering all these questions. And it was really cool. Almost. I mean, it, it was pitched to Animal Planet. I think it was. Um 
Yeah, I think I think that's the the mm-hmm. station. Yeah. And they, they they just didn't want to or yeah, they they just didn't want to do the uh it wasn't that we didn't get the sh- uh, the job is that nobody got it. Like they they had other people that were pitched too, oh. I'm sure. But um mm-hmm. you know, they they just you know, they they were they wanted people who were who's going to be the skeptic, who's going to be the scientist. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking at the time was like, you know, I want to do the show, but that's been done right and and that, that formula yeah. has been done and, so. and that's basically what the station came back it's like we'd be willing to do uh, to look at a show but we want a different you know mm-hmm. and so that's the last we heard of it but almost we almost got to travel <laughs> well and... you know that that thing I, I feel like um you kind of have to go through some stuff like that to kind of realize what you don't want to do you know, because, I mean, how many paranormal shows are out there? I can't, I've lost count. I've, once, you know, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, uh, Dead Files, you know what I mean? There's so many at this point. And there's, you know, all kinds of ones from, you know, U- the UK and all that stuff. So there's so many different um, shows. So I, I think you guys should kind of start um, where you're at. You, you've got a podcast. It's an awesome podcast. Uh, just for the record, I haven't really, like, researched you guys. I've only heard two podcasts. <laughs> I've only heard two of them. So. I kind of don't really know about you guys that much, but um, but the thing is, I I think you guys should kind of start, you know, get, just kind of getting yourself out there, just like you know, kind of promoting yourself a little more, and uh, you know, kind of maybe doing some like you know appearances at uh, at conventions, uh, maybe even holding your own convention. I feel like you guys are are not meant to kind of piggyback on someone else. Don't want don't want, don't wait for someone else to come to you and say, hey. Uh, you know, let's do this and kind of start it from the beginning. I think you guys kind of need to start getting together, getting some ideas and say, hey, let's start small. Let's, let's get a, let's get a newsletter. Let's get, uh, let's start our own paranormal convention in this part of the area, you know, this, this area that we're in that maybe doesn't have one. Um, and then just go from there, you know, and then maybe just find out about, you know, buying some airtime, getting, you know, getting a podcast or, you know, something that is, of like a web a webcast or something, you know what I mean? Something like that. Start with like little things, and I feel like doors are just gonna kind of open up, and I feel like the right people are gonna come to you, and and I feel like at some point you you know should be picky choosy, you know, just kind of say, well, you know what, we can do our own thing. We're we're happy where we're at, you know, and just kind of just start getting out there more, because I feel like you guys really, I mean, you're reaching a lot of people now, but I feel like you guys can reach so many more people, and you guys have so much, you know so much, you've been through so much, I think it would be just uh, just awesome. I really think the way is kind of open for you guys. I don't see any major, I don't, I, you know, because I have people come to me and say, oh, should I start this business? Should I start this thing? And I kind of, you know, I don't think it would be a good time now, maybe, you know, a couple of years, and of course, they don't want to hear that, you know. Um, but I, I feel like you guys are kind of at, at a point where it's like, okay, we, we, it's almost like you've outgrown these shoes. You know, and they're tight for you or something. And so, you know, you're expanding. You, you, you need to get out there more. You need to kind of put yourself out there more, even if it's, you know, one day a month, you know what I mean? Have a have a meeting, a paranormal meeting within that area so that you can get together and, you know, talk to people about stuff and then get a convention going and then get, you know, your webcast going. And then I think it's just going to grow and grow and grow from there. Well, I hope you're right, Marie. Um, we've been really, well, it's not, lazy is not the right word, but, uh, we haven't been real brave with jumping into, uh, in anything we have to invest money in. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to put it. Um, but but I, I will say that if, uh, if your, your, if this, you know, um, forecast of yours is anywhere near as accurate as your readings were, then, well, we perhaps it's time thing. for us. Uh, <laughs> perhaps it's time for us to 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 make such a leap. Um, but either way, um, mm-hmm. thank you so very much for uh, your yeah. your stories and your readings. Um, it has been a, an absolute pleasure talking to you tonight. Yeah, let me. Uh, yeah. And for me, I gotta say, like, I mean, I, I love hearing stories from everybody anyway. But it's exciting too, right? To to talk to somebody that can tell you something about yourself <laughs> you know like it's kind of exciting is is neat so i was kind of i i didn't want to put any pressure or nothing like that because i know it but i was looking forward to it and just wondering if you were able to so that was really cool um so marie again thanks for coming on the show it was, uh great and um i hope that uh you know i know you got a ufo story so 
<laughs> why, why don't you email yeah, that me? That one's really quick. It was really interesting. But yeah, I can definitely tell you that, that later. You can just put it on the website or whatever. It's, it's up to you. But I, I just want to say thank you for having me on the podcast. It was such an honor. I think you guys, like I said, are just doing an awesome thing. And I think you guys are just, you, you can go even further with this. And I, I just want to say thank you so much for, for doing this. Just, you know, because you really are helping a lot of people. You know, you're getting the stories out there and you're helping people. You don't, you don't know. People might not comment. They might not say, hey, thanks for this. But you could be helping them a lot, and you don't know. So I just want to say thank you for having me on. I, I appreciate it. You guys are terrific. You're really awesome. And it was such an honor. Well, thank you so much, Marie. Um, <clears throat> and I hope you're right. I hope it does help people because I, I feel like it'll balance out all the bad stuff we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, somehow, maybe, we might get somewhere that's not so hot in the afterlife. <laughs> But, uh, no, you guys are doing a good thing. You guys, you know, if you, if you are always trying to help people, it's always going to come back to you in a good way. So, Well, thanks, Marie. And for everybody else out there, if you've got an effed up story, you can send that to us at effedupstories.com, and uh, we'll get it on the website and into a podcast. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we'll have more for you shortly. Have a good night. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Good night. <laughs>